Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text for our meditation this morning, today's gospel from Luke chapter 5, in the name of Jesus, amen. Like some of you, Jesus would rather be fishing, but not for that delicious lake perch or walleye pike, and I'm pretty sure it didn't have anything like what's going on out on Lake Winnebago this week. Jesus would rather be fishing for people. He wants to take people out of the kingdom of darkness and bring them into the kingdom of light. He wants to take sinners out of the world and bring them into his church where they receive the forgiveness of sins. Not only does he want to do it, he does it. And his apostles and his church do it. You will catch men, Jesus said to Peter and the others. And they did. They brought thousands of lost sinners into the church and forgave their sins. Jesus is still saying, you will catch men. And we do. The church is still bringing in lost sinners and giving them the gifts of Christ, the forgiveness of sins, the Holy Spirit, and the hope of resurrection to life everlasting. The question I put to you this morning is how, how, Will we catch men? If you want to catch fish, you have to have the right tools. So it is with fishing for people. You have to use the right tool. And the right tool is the word of Christ. It all begins with the words of Jesus. Our text says that one day Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret with people crowding around him, listening to the word of God. Now take note of that, listening to the word of God. Again and again in scripture, we are encouraged to listen or hear the word of the Lord. Now that doesn't mean just letting the words hit your eardrums. It means to meditate on it. Chew it up, swallow it down, so that, so that it gets into your brain and into your being. The people in our text were listening to Jesus, and among them were the future apostles. At this point, they were fishermen who'd come in from a long night of fishing and were now on the shore, cleansing their nets, preparing for the next round. Jesus wanted a better podium to preach from, so he got into Simon's boat and asked him to put out a little from the shore. And there in the boat, he kept right on teaching. He spent most of his ministry teaching and preaching, which tells us that we should spend the most important part of our time listening to and hearing his word. His words are spirit, and they are life. Everything about our Christian life begins with and is dependent upon hearing the words of Jesus. A disciple is first and always a hearer of the word. It has to be. Because faith comes from hearing. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's impossible to fish for men without a living faith that comes from the words of Jesus. We read in the book of Acts that the early Christians devoted themselves to the apostles' doctrine, and they did this by listening to the preaching and teaching of the apostles. They became fishers of men because they sat in the school of Jesus and devoted their ears to his words. What can his words do? Well, let's see. 
Our text says, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. You see, Peter had his doubts about Jesus' fishing ability. Jesus was, after all, a carpenter, not a fisherman. What did he know about fishing? Nevertheless, he went along with the words of Jesus. At your word, he said, I will let down the nets. You see, listening to the words of Jesus includes believing the words of Jesus. And to believe the words of Jesus means to do the words of Jesus. Jesus said, put out into deep water and let down your nets. And skeptical though he was, Peter listened to the words of Jesus. And the results? Luke tells us, when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. In the catching of men, the net, of course, is the gospel. The gospel is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. When the gospel net is dropped according to the command of Jesus, sinners are brought into the boat, which is the church. And in the boat of the church, there is forgiveness of sins and fellowship with Jesus. Peter's a great example of this point. Luke says, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the great catch of fish they had taken. The net of the gospel dropped on Peter, and he was caught. In the boat of the church, the eyes of sinners, like Peter's eyes, are open to the truth of their sinfulness before God. This is that work of, of the word of God we call the law. The law is preached. It opens our eyes to our sins. And we become terrified of our predicament. We're sinners in the presence of a holy God. This ought to scare the socks off of us. Do you know the number one reason why people avoid coming to church? Oh, they'll blame it on a lot of things. But the primary reason people stay away from church is that they don't want to be confronted by the fact that they're sinners. Oh, deep down they know they're sinners. But by avoiding God's house, they don't have to deal with it. They can ignore it. They can pretend it isn't true. They can just forget about it. But coming to church reminds them of this unavoidable reality. We're sinners. And standing before God in his house forces us to be confronted with the truth of our predicaments. We're sinners, and there's nothing we can do about it. There's no good deed. There's nothing we can say. Nothing in all the vastness of the universe that can be obtained to change who and what we are. And that is the most uncomfortable reality with which to be confronted. The law always makes us squirm in our seats. We don't like being sinners in the presence of a holy God. The casual approach many people take to worship is appalling. Beloved, we are here in the presence of the almighty, holy, and righteous God. Oh, may he open our eyes to what is happening in this place and time. We sinners are in the boat with the holy God. And like Peter, we must cry out, I am a sinful man. And like Peter, we must despair. Until, 
until we remember that the Holy One in the boat of the church is also the Lamb of God who takes away our sins. Having approached his throne with fear and trembling and repented of our sins, despairing of our ability to atone for them, we look closely at the hands of the one standing before us and find there wounds. For he was wounded for our transgressions. Those wounded holy hands say to us, as Jesus said to Peter, don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. That's gospel, beloved. Pure gospel. It's absolution. It's the voice of God saying, your sins are paid for. Come, follow me. Be with me. Listen to my word. And you will catch men. We're right to be interested in catching people for Christ, for bringing them into the church. God help us if we don't want and pray for more hearers. For more hearers leads to more Peters saying, I'm a sinful man, and more people being told, don't be afraid. That's what Jesus came for. It's what the church is here for. It's not just for us and for our children and our children's children. It's for all who need to be mortified by the law and soothed by the gospel. Brothers and sisters, let each of us make that our concern and devote ourselves to the words of Jesus. The, the words of Jesus, not human reason, will catch people for his kingdom. Peter and the others fished all night and caught nothing. They followed their own reason, and the result was a dark, fruitless night. And so it'll be for us if we follow our reasoning rather than his words. And that's not easy. We would rather have the latest computer-driven fish finder. We'd rather have programs built on the best marketing data and the latest uh, sociological studies. We want experts to point us to where the best fishing may be found. But to live by faith means that we close the eyes of our reason and say, because you say so, we will let down the nets. But maybe you're wondering, how do we let down the nets? Where and how do you begin to share the words of Jesus with someone? That's a very good question. And I have a very simple answer. If you want to know a simple way to share Jesus with another person, our Senate has recently released a brand new outreach training tool that's meant to proceed along these very lines. The simple sharing of the words of Jesus, the simple letting down of the nets. It's called Everyone His Witness. And it's a one-day training session that's being offered over at Peace on Saturday, March 9th. I have 10 workbooks available. I'm wondering if there are 10 of you who care about lost souls, 10 of you who are willing to take the training with me. 
It would cost you 10 bucks, which isn't much this day and age. Please pray about that. In the meantime, because he says so, let's endeavor to be those who, first of all, listen intently to the word of the law, which tells us we're sinners, and the word of the gospel, which tells us we're saints. And secondly, because he says so, let's continue to baptize, to teach, to preach, to administer his holy body and blood. And because he says so, let's get ready to catch men. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.